right so let us see the object oriented uh, properties or object oriented programming principles which are present at the uh, core part of the java so basically we know that there are two uh, uh, paradigms uh, that is uh, object oriented programming and procedure oriented programming so we concentrate on two entities usually that is code and the data and when we concentrate more on the code that is called as procedure oriented programming say example c when we concentrate more on data that will be an example of object oriented programming in procedure we just concentrate in in procedure oriented con uh, in procedure oriented model what we do we just concentrate on the code source code we just follow the procedure that is what is happening whereas in object oriented who is being affected will be controlled that is the data which is being affected will be controlled in the object oriented programming so in object oriented programming we will have security for the data so how uh, that is with the help of classes that is uh, the data part is present in the data members and those data members will only be accessed by the member functions all that we will be discussing later how actually the uh, data is controlled the access to the data is controlled by the outside world so one more uh, entity here is abstraction what is an abstract abstraction data abstraction is nothing but hiding the internal details of the system from the outside world from the user is called as hiding the internal details of the system from the user is called as data abstraction that is how actually the system is working internally that we are going to hide the more complex details will be hidden from the user what user wants they just want the functionality or work to be done or work to be done say for example when we have a vehicle this is what it is taken in the textbook that is when we have a car when we have a car or vehicle so the user will use that car the user will use that car now what is the role of abstraction here is what user wants user wants to sit on the sit in the car and just they want to ride the car but user is using this whole thing as a system whole thing as a system but to build this system there are so many components which are interconnected there are so many components which are interconnected and how those components are working with each other how those components are cooperating with each other that internal detail is kept beyond the scope of user user just don't want to worry about those things that is what is happening internally they don't want to worry what they want they just want to use the system for example one component could be the brakes i think this example i gave while explaining about the abstraction in c++ what we want one functionality whenever we apply the brakes what we expect the car has to stop the car has to stop but when for the application of the brake if the car has to stop there are so many components which are interconnected one cable is there which is contain which is connected to the disc of the wheel the cable is going to stop the disc and the disc is in turn going to stop the wheel of the vehicle and once the wheel is stopping the vehicle will stop again wheel and vehicle are connected with so many components so all these internal details we are hiding from the user user is not worrying about all those internal details what they want when the brake is applied vehicle should stop similarly in terms of programming in terms of programming so suppose we have a user who want to add numbers from 1 to 100 so what user can do here is user can call a function user can call a function the function will execute and give back the result function will execute and give back the result so what is being uh, hidden from the user here i don't want how this code is written i don't want how this code is written what i want ultimately i want the results from the function that is called as data abstraction or only abstraction just hide the internal details or complex details from the 
user so that they can get only pure service that's what is a data abstraction and the three object oriented principles which are already known to us that is the data encapsulation or only encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism so what is an encapsulation binding together the code and the data into a single entity is called as a data encapsulation or encapsulation a wrapping up of code and the data together is called as data encapsulation with the data encapsulation we are going to provide security for the data i'll take the example of diagram to explain what is encapsulation what is encapsulation encapsulation uh, comes from the name capsule which is going to contain the medicine with the data encapsulation what we provide here is we provide security for the data that means if it is a data part which is going to contain some variables int a b c there are three variables and combining the data and the code together this is what is code part or say functions part functions combining together joining together the data part and the code part together into a single entity is called as encapsulation and how we provide security for this encapsulation the security is provided for the data by restricting only this code can access this data and if there is some other method some other outside method say multiplication division and subtraction which are not part of this encapsulated entity usually encapsulation is implemented in java by using class if there are outside methods which are not part of this class they are not allowed to access the data the multiplication division and subtraction methods are not allowed to access the data a b c that is how we provide security in case of object oriented programming that is in case of java right that was about encapsulation inheritance so inheritance is just a mechanism with which one object acquires or inherits the properties from other object properties from other object that means so you can take example the children inheriting property from the parents so the same inheritance mechanism is used in object oriented programming also so it is just a mechanism with which one object acquires or one class acquires properties from other class so if this is object 1 and it can acquire properties from uh, object 2 can acquire properties from object 1 and this is called as inheritance this is called as inheritance we will use the concept of inheritance later in the programming part so what actually happens here is through inheritance the data members of object 1 can be accessed within the object 2 that means they can be part of the object 2 for example the object 1 has a variable called int a and object b has its own variable called int b then as object 2 is inheriting properties from object 1 there will be a copy of int a also in the object 2 that means in other words object 2 can inherit or acquire the data members which are present in object 1 because object 2 is inheriting properties from object 1 that is what is called as inheritance so inheritance basically it is useful while uh, if you want to reuse the code the reuse of the code will be supported by using inheritance reuse of the code will be supported by using the concept of inheritance right polymorphism polymorphism uh, is an again one object oriented principle with which one interface can be used for multiple actions one interface can be used for multiple actions 
so uh, one example what we can see here is uh, the for three different types of stacks say for example uh, uh, integer type of stack floating point type of stack and character type of stacks if there are three types of stacks and for corresponding stacks you can use the same names of the methods but with different parameters same names of the methods but with different parameters so that is called as polymorphism say so for example if there are two stacks three stacks s1 s2 and s3 and there are methods push is a method again push is a method push is a method right assume this is an uh, integer stack and this is floating point type of stack and it is character type of stack that means the type of data what we are processing in these stacks the type of data what we are processing in these stacks they are of these types now what actually is a polymorphism here is the same interface the same name of the interface which is being used for multiple purposes when in the first push if you are passing two as the parameter this will invoke the corresponding definition for this stack this is referring to the integer stack when you use say 2.5 as the parameter it is taking floating point number it will implicitly refer to the floating point type of stack and when you say push a it is a character constant and that will be referred to the stack number 3 why because that is going to process character type of data so what basically is a polymorphism the same interface the same entity which is existing in multiple forms the same entity which is existing in multiple forms so the push function the, the the functionality of the push is same the name of the interface is same but the working mechanism is different based on the type of the data for all these stacks we have written a different definitions for the push but user feel better to remember the same names and instead of giving other names that's why we go for the polymorphism right one second 